Hello and welcome back to the Space to Thrive everyone and in today's session we're going to be diving into a hot topic in collaboration and probably in life in general which is decision making. I'm your collaboration coach and facilitator, I'm Ed Moss, and in today's 1% improvement in under 1% of your day, we'll walk you through a comprehensive guide to mastering the art of decision making, particularly in group settings, using a time-honoured technique. Now in the spirit of the hope that probably brought you to this video, I thought it might be helpful to just share a short quote by the American activist and civil rights leader Coretta Scott King, who said, Never be afraid to make decisions based on hope, for hope is the foundation of progress. Nice. Now, I love the meaning and origin of words, so I was really curious. The word decision, where does it come from? Turns out it's Latin like many things. Hence decision originally referred to cutting off or cutting away alternatives to arrive at a conclusion. Now decision making is the compass by which we orientate ourselves around in order to move towards our aspirations. Now in a previous video I talked about this idea of leadership where we have one person making all the decisions and everybody else follows along being a little bit outdated. And what we know is in an ever more complex and interconnected world, resting on one person's decision is not really particularly wise these days. So let's embark on this journey to make some decisions and choices that help us drive towards collective ambitions together. Now, the power of making decisions together as a group is immense. However, people often say to me, Ed, it takes so long, I don't have time to discuss with everybody and find the solutions and all of this kind of stuff, to which I often will listen and invite us to then consider what are the consequences of, you know, just trying to make decisions on our own all the time. And more importantly, think about what is it that's creating this sense of urgency inside us and this desire to look for so many quick fixes. Now, quick fixes are neither good nor bad, but they do tend to have some pretty uncomfortable and unpleasant outcomes if we over focus on quick fixes over quite a long period of time. And a kind of weird paradox is that they end up creating a lot more stress and pressure because that's kind of what we're focusing on. So by slowing it down a bit for today, we're actually able to check in on our thinking and pool our collective expertise. Now, another important aspect to all of this, which is when we involve people in the decisions that are going to have an impact on them, we tend to find that there's greater ownership of the decisions that are made. This kind of makes sense though, because we're at work for maybe 35 to 40% of our time. So why would, why would anybody really not ultimately want to have some element of control over what that looks like? Now I'd like to introduce you to a simple tool that will help you and your team make better decisions. Edward de Bono's Six Thinking Hats was created by the namesake in around the 1970s. Edward de Bono was particularly interested in understanding how we think and particularly how groups think to try and get us out of some of the dead ends that we often find ourselves in. This technique encourages us to put on different hats, symbolizing a number of different modes of thinking, enabling us to view a situation from a number of different perspectives. Now, the first hat I would like to introduce you to is the white hat. One of the great starting points of making better decisions is to consider what are your actual goals. So say for example you're starting a new project. What are the objectives of this project? Who is your target group and what are your expected outcomes in the short to medium term that are actually realistic of in achieving? So as we wear this hat firmly but not too tightly we can then focus on the facts, the data, and the information that helps us to make more informed decisions based on concrete evidence. Questions are also super important at this stage. Generate as many of them as possible. You can always decide later not to answer them. I find it super interesting that in Japanese business culture, it's quite often customary to have a few meetings actually just establishing what the white hat is all about. Because then when you bring all of that back together, you're then starting to pool that collective resource and knowledge that you've gained. 
The second hat I'm going to invite you to think about your situation, decision from, is the red hat. And this one is primarily focused on our feelings, our intuition, and the feelings of others. We're typically quite feelings-based creatures. You know, we've got a lot going on in us all of the time, and that is often driving us towards the things that we may or may not then do. So by openly acknowledging the feelings that we have around this new project, it allows us to explore that in an open way. And it's a really great way of helping teams get closer and work better together. I'd also seek out the advice of external experts or stakeholders. So that could be like customers or clients, because ultimately all of these people have thoughts and ideas and opinions about your new project as you're about to launch it in this example. And so it's useful to get their perspective so that you can consider how you weigh up their contribution. Okay, so now we're on to the black hat is all about critical thinking and caution. And the way I experience this is about imagining that you're in a dark forest on a dark night and there's no light. So you want to kind of consider the risks to like trip and fall, consider how likely it would be to do that, consider the potential impact of falling in that forest in the dark on your own. And so therefore you might want to slow down your pace and make some adjustments to how you move through that space. Identifying potential risks and drawbacks, this can be super helpful. For example, maybe our team is really overloaded at the moment and taking on another project isn't going to be particularly wise. It helps us identify potential pitfalls and make our decision making much more robust. The yellow hat signifies opportunities and optimism as well as the kind of positivity that there might be. Say, for example, if you were standing on the top of a mountain as the sunrise came up and you could kind of see the day stretching out ahead of you. When wearing this hat, we're looking for the opportunities, the potential, and also a real focus on the outcomes. And we're looking for the benefits and advantages of those opportunities that are being presented by the decision in front of us. So together, the black and the yellow hat represent the kind of sun and moon, yin and yang energies, if you like. And so together, they're super, super powerful when we consider them. Think of them almost like a, a more considered pros and cons list, but maybe without the connotations of, of one being better than the other. Now, the next hat could be considered as the, the, the union that joins these two hats together and focuses actually on this space in between these two hats. The green hat embraces creativity, and innovation, new ideas, and borrowed ideas. What do I mean by that? For example, it encourages us to spend time mind mapping. If that's a technique that you're not so familiar with, uh, please pop it in the comments below and I perhaps will make a video about it. It also encourages us to play around with the kind of no limits thinking and kind of breaking natural laws, that kind of idea. For example, what would happen if we were to try and do this project with no gravi gravity? or if we had all the money in the world, or perhaps a personal favorite of mine, what if we were to try and make this as rubbish as possible and break everything, what would we do? Because then we can kind of flip each of those ideas around, which is a super fun thing to do. Also, is there someone in the team or in your organization, friendship circle, space, sector, that is doing something interesting that, this, that kind of it reminds you of this project already? In which case, it's about thinking, ah, what ideas could we borrow from that in, in order to inform our thinking and come up with an alternative way of doing something? Now, at the green hat stage, when we have that on our heads, we're not really looking to necessarily critique all the ideas at this point. We're literally just trying to come up with as many different ideas as possible. As the energy of all the new ideas starts to slow down in the discussion, you may want to start bringing in some reality checking by borrowing perhaps some of the goals from your white hat, maybe some of the risks and caution from the black hat, and maybe applying some of the opportunities that you've identified in the yellow hat to see whether there's two or three of these green hat ideas that might be worth taking forward, developing a bit more, to see whether they might be the decision you wish to take. Finally now, we come on to the blue hat, often misunderstood by people, um, this one is very much about managing uh, the sequence, which I'll come on to in a moment. I like to also include here checking 
for biases and creating reflection. When we wear the blue hat, what we're really trying to do here is check our thinking and understanding. So we're asking if any questions need clarifying or any new questions need asking. Now at this point, there's an invitation to be mindful that we're not being overly cautious or overanalyzing, because then we can get stuck in decision paralysis, which is not particularly helpful, right? However, there are some particular aspects that I find really, really helpful to explore. One of which is this idea of checking our biases. And there are a number of biases that I find it helpful to consider. Uh, so number one is confirmation bias. Now, your team may lean towards information that supports the idea of, say, launching a new product long before you've actually even looked into how practical or feasible it is given the time and energy that your team currently have. So it's really worth noting if you tend to be a team that, that kind of stick with confirmation bias. The second one is anchoring bias. Now this one, it might be that the team are influenced by the first idea or the first cost estimate that they get and then kind of base all of their other decisions around that. If that's something you're prone to, it's worth just holding that uh, and checking it during the blue hat process. The next one is availability heuristic. And this bias involves basing our decisions on already available information and often from recent experiences or very vivid examples. So for example, if you heard someone moving career and they had a really bad experience, you might end up over-focusing on that and using that as the decision not to make a change in your situation. Now, the fourth one that I'm going to share with you is overconfidence. We do tend to overestimate our abilities and the accuracy of our predictions just look at any plan that most teams produce. So when considering a new project, a new venture or a decision, it's really worthwhile considering and balancing how overly confident you may or may not be in your skills, ability or timeline, or whether you're downplaying any potential risks. Now, the final one that I'm going to share with you today is groupthink. And groupthink is a particularly interesting one because it comes up a lot in the work that I do with teams where people talk about this kind of desire for harmony, uh, they don't like discomfort, and so therefore the team may suppress any kind of dissenting opinions and kind of pass them off really quickly. It really limits the thorough evaluation of alternatives and what is possible within a team. And so I often say if there hasn't been any discomfort or much discomfort from the whole team during a discussion, it's very possible that the group has drifted into groupthink. So if you have drifted into groupthink, it's really worth revisiting a couple of other hats. Maybe you want to go back to the green hat or maybe check in with the white hat. So now that we're aware of all of these cognitive biases in terms of how we're thinking, I think it's also important to consider the role our bodies play in decision making. So when making important decisions, either individually or as a group, it is often suggested that you take a deep breath. Now, it turns out there's actually quite a bit of science behind this to encourage open communication. And for this, I would highly recommend that people take a moment to, for example, share what they believe the situation is or the decision that they would make in one breath. And for each person to do that by taking it in turns, going around the table or virtual Zoom space, one person at a time, but doing it popcorn style. So whenever someone is ready to speak, I would really, really encourage that the most highly paid person or the most vocal person be invited to go last to avoid potential drift back into groupthink. Now, by systematically wearing each of these different hats during our decision-making discussions, we can tame biases, gain a more comprehensive view of the choices that are at hand. And it also fosters this much more collaborative environment, right? Where team members can actively participate and contribute their own unique perspectives and insights. My invitation is that the whole team move through this in a sequence. And if you're interested in how you can move some of these around to make very interesting meeting agendas, please comment in the comment section below and I'll look into making a video about that. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support me, in my mission to getting to 1000 subscribers, then please click on the subscribe button below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified each day when my videos come out. And also please like and comment on this video because that tells the YouTube algorithms that you're finding this interesting and it will share with more people. 
helping me to get to that thousand subscribers sooner. So for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to working in a more collaborative world.